actually when I decided to uh, uh, pull hide away out of the water, I needed to have a trailer that I could take measurements off of and understand what I needed to tell the people to build the trailer. Uh, this trailer, this is, this is another Compact 23 in our club. This trailer is very old. Uh, it's near the end of its life, but it's one of the better trailers made. Uh, what I did was I took measurements from here to here and, and various other places. I noticed that he has a 2x6 uh, plate for the keel to land on. The compact keel is about 12 inches wide. Uh, I didn't think that was a real good idea. The, uh, Notice how low, notice how low his uh, guide-ons are, uh, much lower than mine. Notice also all the scratches on the keel. Those two items are related in my opinion, and that's what we wanted to avoid with doing these scratches. Uh, like I said, this is a, a very old trailer, and it's, I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it's definitely uh, getting near the end of its, its time, but uh, it's much lighter built, it's much easier to run. Uh, the location of where this boat is on the trailer is better than ours. And you'll notice too that he's able to bring his uh, up properly to, uh, to match the, uh, the guide on. So there are some things that, uh, that they did definitely did better and maybe that was um, <clears throat> something that we should have done. The biggest mistake I made, and before you decide you're going to build your own trailer, I took my measurements here, from here to here, actually to the bottom of the, uh, right to the top of the board here. And I thought I was right. Uh, and I mean, I measured and measured and measured. So we, we were real convinced that it was right. Uh, two things happened. One, this particular trailer has a deeper V to it. It's closer to the ground. That I didn't take into consideration. And the other problem was is I should have measured We're on flat level ground. I should have measured from here to the ground not from the trailer up because of that angle. What happened to us was that we finally got everything built. First time we pulled it out of the water, uh, one side of the boat was just like this, it was fine. The other side, this bumper was down a good six inches. Had this been anything other than a compact sailboat with this wide fat keel, that boat would have fallen over. So before you decide to do this, you have to be very, very careful about what you do. Uh, the risk, I don't know. Uh, it may have fallen over as it was coming out and nothing would have happened. It may have crushed me. It may have damaged the boat. We don't know. We just got very, very lucky. The minute we discovered that, we tied lines on the other side of the boat to hold it up. And then it's a simple matter to adjust these things. A hammer and a big wrench, three-quarter inch wrench, will do wonders and it was quickly done. But uh, we escaped. Had this been uh, a boat with a thin keel, it would have fallen. So be very careful about that. Uh, yeah, I saved probably twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500, but that could have easily been eaten up in a hospital bill or a casket. So think about it before you do it. Okay, uh, this is a similar boat to the Compact 23. It's a 23 footer. It's just a different brand. Uh, this is the trailer that came with the boat. And I just wanted to show you that uh, the owner recently replaced the uh, two by six down here with rollers. Uh, the rollers are spaced about a foot apart. And the idea, of course, is he can, he can winch the boat onto the trailer better. And I suppose uh, that's true. Notice too how low the guide-ons are. This boat is going to come in contact with the bunks before it comes in contact with the, uh, with the rollers. Because remember, your trailer's like this, your boat's coming in like that. To me, I would rather have a big solid board for my keel to land on rather than a, a half inch thick axle of a roller. That's just my opinion. I don't know. Uh, he uh, hasn't had any problems with it, but I, I would not recommend doing it. The other thing that you have to think about too now is that the entire weight of this boat, and it, it probably weighs close to 4,000 pounds, is spread out under well, less than a dozen rollers. That, that are only that wide. Uh, I don't think that's wise in my opinion. Tell me. One other thing I wanted to point out, and this wasn't a, wasn't a problem for, for me because I didn't have a through hole anywhere near the bunk, but look right here. There is a through hole right on top of the bunk. When I run my hand along this area, I feel a slight indentation. That can't be good, folks. <laughs> that really can't be good. I doubt that he's aware of it. I'm going to point it out to him next time I see him. But you got to be really careful 
uh, about designing your trailer. What looks like a fine example of poor planning is actually a, a pretty creative solution for a problem of uh, wanting to get the bottom of your boat painted but only having a trailer designed for a 27 foot boat. When your boat's a 25 that's a problem. Uh, a couple of cinder blocks, a few timbers and that takes care of the depth issue. Uh, then it's just a matter of balance and uh, must have been an interesting retrieval. I wonder how they're going to uh, paint the area where the uh, blocks are at on this particular boat. But uh, fortunately that's not my problem. Those lead keels are nice. This one happens to be iron and look what happens after it's been in salt water for a while. That's a major repair problem on this boat and um, I'm glad I don't have to deal with it. And this fella has already repaired his, but uh, don't, doesn't seem to have a place for it to land. So now you've got fiberglass and fresh paint directly onto galvanized metal. That's never a good idea. Here's another example of uh, rollers and keels, only this boat's much heavier. The uh, uh, axles to the rollers are much heavier as well. I don't really know how well it works, but uh, so far so good. And if you have a few 2x12s laying around, you can just box your keel in. In this case, the rollers are actually the bunks holding the uh, uh, boat balanced. It seems to work. It's an old boat, and it's been around a very long time, and uh, it works fine. This trailer, however, is fully loaded just as you look at it. Notice how the wheels have cocked out. If you put a, put a boat on this, it's just going to squat like a duck, and you'll, uh, you'll uh, find out what a broken axle is. Now this seemingly disastrous looking situation is really not. This is a static display set up to uh, help teach kids how to sail. Once this boat is uh, uh, firmly stabilized, it's going to be a, a nice playing area as well as a good uh, teaching tool for youngsters and adults alike. All right, it's time finally to go sailing, so join the hideaways. We're going to take off here and launch and go out and sail away the rest of this beautiful afternoon on Bogusiega Bay, Gulfport, Florida. <laughs>